As I grew up, walking in this great big world, I gazed in awe at the wonders of Allah. And as I learned the cruel lessons of life, Islam shone through as my guiding light. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to another new and exciting edition of your favorite program, Good Answer. I'm your host Malik and I'm joined by the founder of Guide Us TV, our beloved Sheikh Yusuf Estes. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh Yusuf. Wa alaikum salam Hey, Sheikh, you know, it's not just us over here. We also have our studio audience. Assalamu alaikum, guys. I hope you guys have some good questions or a good question to start off with because I know, Sheikh Yusuf, you have a good answer. I hope. <laughs> Inshallah. But I have you on the hot seat right now mm. because I have a gentleman from the UK. We went a to the question UK. from the UK? We have a question from the UK. You're on the hot seat. Can you answer it? Whoa, well, let's find out what the question is. Right, let's check it out. All right, you guys, check out this clip. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Muhammad Yusuf. Uh, I'm an accountant. Basically, my question to Yusuf Estes is why Islam is uh, undermined around the world? Is this the fault of a Muslim or the fault of a non Muslim? Or they, they look at what the Islam? Hey, Sheikh, you're on the hot seat. I like my seat over here. I'm feeling comfortable because he asked you a tough question. He asked you a good question. Can you give him? A good answer. His question seemed like he said, why is Islam, Islam being undermined? Right. Is it from the Muslims? Is it from the non-Muslims? Exactly. Is that what he said? That's exactly what he said, yeah. Now let's ask the studio audience here. Anybody have something? Uh, well, uh, my name is Muhammad. Yes, Muhammad. My question is, Sheikh, um, a lot of people um, are harsh in their treatment. I, I'm not sure if this is uh, the, the reason behind that. Can you give us more insight about how can we treat with other people? Okay. Well, that is a good insight, actually, what you said, because I hadn't really thought of it from that perspective, but that's another way to look at it. When we talk about undermining, okay. I'm not sure that I know exactly what, what he, he meant means. by the question, right. but when we understand the word Islam to mean surrender, submission, obedience, sincerity, and peace, peace, holistic, purity, some of the words that we know Islam means, then we could say, what's undermining that? Okay. And I would have to say that there are, there are factors outside of the Muslims right. attacking. Okay. And we know that this is from the devil himself attacking okay. God's true religion of surrender to God in peace. The, right. the meaning, surrender to God in peace. This is the meaning of Islam. All right. Now, who would be the biggest enemy to that? Would be the devil. So he would be the undermining uh, factor here, right. I right. think. And we'll find in chapter 2 of the Quran, verse 208, and Allah says, Now, here Allah is saying, O you who believe, enter into Islam perfectly. Okay. Voila. And do not follow the footsteps of the shaitan. Verily, he is an avowed enemy to you. So for sure, Allah has already told us who our biggest enemy yes. is, the okay. devil himself. Okay. And he's constantly doing what's called wiswas. The last surah of the Quran deals with the subject of right. wiswas, whispering into the sudrinas, the hearts or the chest of mankind, right, whispering right. right into your heart, really, okay. to get you to do bad stuff. Okay. And we seek refuge, na'udhu billah, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from this wiswas, this okay. whispering. And the devil has no power except that he can do this whispering. That's and he sure tries to influence us in so many things we do. Right. So now let's take it to the next level. You're suggesting that, and I agree with you, that Muslims have done a lot of wrong things along the way. Right. We, we don't show Islam properly because of our bad habits, our bad characteristics that we have. Right. But right. they're not bad habits as a Muslim. They're bad habits that are not from Islam. Right, right. So a Muslim doing bad things doesn't mean Islam taught him to do that. Right, right, right. And we have so many examples. You can look at, you can pick up your newspaper, right. front page, and find something right. that a Muslim did wrong somewhere. Right, right. You know? But that doesn't mean Islam taught him that. That simply means that 
he's doing something against Islam. Now, who inspired him is the devil. Now, here's an interesting thing, though. While the Muslims are making up somewhere between 20 and 25 percent of the population of the earth, okay. what about the other 70. 80 or 75 percent? Right. When they do something wrong, we're not seeing that blasted all over the screen. We're not seeing it really thrown out. There was one, you remember back, that uh, killed 71 people in Norway. Yes, indeed, Sheikh. I do remember that. And it hurt my heart when they said immediately, we believe this is Islamic, Islamic terrorism, when in fact it was quite the opposite, wasn't it? Yeah, immediate, yes, you're right. While it was going on, they were saying, this is an Islamist out here. It looks yeah. like, oh, it's Islamic. And he said himself, he was doing it against Muslims, yeah. against Islam. Yeah. And he said it was self-defense. And then they said, well, you see, he's not well. He's m mentally not balanced. And you, uh, I think everybody knows about that. Right. But still, and, and I'm not talking about that man and what he did. And I'm not talking about what Muslims and they do. What I'm talking about is the way things are represented right, right. in the general media. Right. Which, by the way, excuse me for putting a plug in here. But Huda TV is here for this purpose, to show the right reason and the right purpose for right. all of us as Muslims to move forward on true Islam. Right. Not what somebody said Islam is, but what Islam really is from the very word itself. That's why I keep going back to the etymology. Right. And right. by the way, uh, as long as I'm giving these plugs out here, <laughs> I mentioned Peace TV too, right. because right. it's another great source right. for finding out what is true Islam and as well, Guide Us TV in America. What we're saying again and again to all of the Muslims, guys, understand for crying out loud, there are forces out there trying to get you to do bad things and then say, see what he did? Right. And that's the devil himself. He'll come to you, oh, do this, do this, do this, and you do it, and then he's your enemy. He'll say, ha, see what he did? Look at that. So this is the shaitan. This is the devil himself inspiring you to do bad and then inspiring your enemies to notice it and promote that as though it was Islam. Right. And this is what we are seeing everywhere. I want us to focus on ourselves and not blame anybody else. Let us not blame Jews or Christians. Let's don't blame the media. Let's don't blame the politicians. Don't blame these false kings or any of the rest right. of it. Let's don't even blame the devil. You know what? Let's blame ourselves because everybody's living in the same world. Every human being is out there is dealing with the same kind of problems. We don't have any more excuse than anybody else. Right. Excellent. You're making choices. Live up to that. You made the choice, now deal with it. You said something, you did something, it was wrong. Say, you know what, I'm wrong, I stuck for the law, I apologize. Hardest thing in the world for a human being to say. Excellent. True or false? That's a good answer, it's true. And Sheikh Yusuf, I believe that many of us in the Muslim world are suffering from what I like to call a victim's mentality when we always blame other people. But what you're saying now right here is, no, we have to look to ourselves and take responsibility for our own actions. Is that what you mean? I want to go back to the Quran okay. again and see what Allah said about it. I think that's fair. Some of our programs, you may have heard me say these words. I love to say it anyway. In Quran, one who was very victimized, in our uh, estimation as human beings, here is a man going to the people of Nineveh. And he's saying, I've been inspired by God to call you to worship only him alone without partners. And guys, I've been inspired by Allah to tell you that if you don't accept this message, he's going to destroy us, all of us. But none of them accepted the message. Not one. Nope, not a single one. So he got up and left. He went out to the seashore, got a boat, went out into the sea. The storm came up. I think you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> then they threw him overboard and a whale swallowed him. Now you know exactly. I'm talking about none other than Jonah and the whale. But by the way, in Quran, we understand the very big message behind it. Because in the whale, the prophet Yunus, Jonah, Jonah, was there for a long period of time, days and nights, days and nights. And he says... That this special word, but before I tell you, I want to tell you what Muhammad said. Please be upon him. Go ahead. He told us, had he not said these words, I'm going to tell you about. Had okay. he not said these words, he would remain in that whale till the day of judgment. Well, what are these words that are so special? Ah, la ilaha illa ante sopanaka ini kuntum minidalimin. He mm. came to the realization and he voiced it, he said it, and listen to this commitment. 
There is none worthy to worship except you, Almighty Allah. The glory, the majesty is all for you. And verily, I am the one who did the wrongdoing to myself. Any kuntumini mean. I did it to myself. I did it to myself. Even though he could say, no, it's those people that threw me off the boat. No, no. it's this whale. He swallowed me. No. no, it's those people in Nineveh. They should have accepted the message. Oh, not me, not me. No. La ilaha illa anti subhanak. None to worship except you, Allah. And you are the majesty of all. Uh, any kuntumin is all I mean. I'm the one that did the bad to myself. I accept responsibility for my action. I accept that I'm wrong. And by saying that, that's when Allah took the whale, sent it back up, spit him out. He went back to his people. And what did he find? We know in Islam that he found that every single one of those people had accepted to submit to God on those terms that he'd preached but didn't stick around to watch him accept. Proving another point, God does not need us to do anything. We are merely callers to truth. If the people accept it, fine and good. If they don't, you have no recourse. You have no recourse. It is not about you and them. It's about them and God. If they accept it, fine. If they don't, you don't do anything to them. Excellent. Another good answer, Sheikh Yusuf. So we can say here, the point is not just sincere repentance, but also taking the responsibility for our actions. Absolutely. If you don't take responsibility for your action, how can you repent? Of course. You yeah. have to say, I'm sorry I did it. What do you say? I'm sorry that he did it? Good answer, Sheikh Yusuf. But we have another good question from our studio audience. Go ahead, brother. Salam alaikum, Sheikh. My name is Muhammad. Muhammad. Are Muslim countries uh, backwarded? And if so, why? Thank you, brother. I think he's asking us. Our countries, our Muslim countries, backward and is Islam to blame. Well, first of all, what do you mean by backward? If we mean by backward, that we find in many Muslim countries, people are using donkeys, camels, right. horses, and actually people to haul <laughs> things around. Right. We're seeing ox carts made out of wood. We're seeing shelters uh, built out of sticks and stones. We're seeing little homes made out of bamboo. And we're seeing people living in rice paddies and working in water up to their knees. And we're seeing all of these problems out there. Uh, then we say, okay, they're backward. Right. What is the reason behind that? Ah, That's the good question. I'd like to take a break and come back and give you the good answer right after that. Thank you so much, Sheikh Yusuf. You guys stay tuned <laughs> for the good answer with Sheikh Yusuf Estes. I am a Muslim. I am a Muslim. Islam my deen. Islam my deen. Allah my Lord. Allah my Lord. His word Quran. His word Quran. Muhammad Prophet. Muhammad Prophet. Praise be upon. Praise be upon. Oh. Oh. Dear brothers and sisters, welcome to a new edition of Ask Huda. I have uh, two questions. Please go ahead. You can read it in Arabic and you can also understand the meaning in your own language. The different tafsir and the interpretation of the meanings of the Quran uh, are available in almost every language that exists on earth by the grace of Allah. The water of Zamzam is for whatever intention you drink it with. Salih from Egypt. His father has the way and he asked about how can he help him? Very good question. Can we give a zakat to any of the Dawah centers? The ibadah or the act of worship is a part of the unity of worship. It has to be paid to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in accordance with the guidance of his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Welcome back to Good Answer, Sheikh Yusuf Estes. I'm feeling comfortable over here. You're on the hot seat. <laughs> you got to come up with these good answers, and we have a lot of tough and good questions. Well, before the break, the brother from the studio audience asked us, are Muslim countries backward, and is, is Islam to blame for this? Actually, we do see in many of the Muslim countries poverty okay. and lack of education. 
if this is the case that we're saying are Muslim countries backward in that respect, we would have to say yes, compared to America, compared right. to Europe, right. compared to UK, right. yes, that's a backward situation. Okay. Is Islam to blame for it? Absolutely not. Why not? No, because first of all, what we know in education today, especially in the areas of science, right. and medicine, language, preservation of history, authentication of facts, all of these sciences that we know today are originating for the most part from Muslim scholars throughout the many centuries. We can go back to Spain, for instance, take for example a thousand years ago, right. and you'd be very surprised to see the advancements that they had then that we still use until this day, okay. that we rely on for scientific evidences in embryology, okay. Sure. Geology, astronomy, understanding hydrology, the water cycle, and so on. All of these things, we can find a lot of examples coming to us from the great learning centers in Andalus, Cordoba, Fez in Morocco, Al-Azhar in Egypt. So many places that we can look at. And don't overlook Baghdad. Of course, in Iraq. And Damascus. Right. And don't overlook the... Saudi Arabia, which has given us some very good examples of higher education. Right. Today, though, that is played down and made to look as though, no, no, no. Right. But as I heard Dr. John Esposito say in Washington, D.C. one time, he said this is knowledge which is borrowed and then reborrowed right. back again and made to look like it belongs to the Western society. But however, the fact is there are so many things we know today that are actually coming right straight from Quran and Hadith of Muhammad and the great scholars who have interpreted and understood these things. So it is very unfair and unwise to make such a statement. Now, as to the condition of Muslims, let us deal with that. Okay. What is the reason for this extreme, and I will use that word, extreme level of poverty for Muslims around the world? Two factors. One is greed. Greed on the part of Muslims themselves, okay. throwing other Muslims into a very bad circumstance by not giving charity, right. by not giving their support as they could from zakat, okay. and greed from non-Muslim sources who want to take the resources from the Muslim lands for themselves. Okay. This is very clear what's happening. You don't okay. have to be the rocket scientist. <laughs> you don't have to be the Historian. star journalist to right. know what's really going on in the world is greed. Okay. And when there is greed, people do suffer, and there's no doubt. But let us also consider the fact, as we've mentioned before, that there are such a huge number of Muslims in the world that uh, there is poverty around the world. Of course. So if you include all of these factors, it balances out. Of course. But check this out. In the United States of America, the level of highest education is amongst Muslims. I'm so glad you mentioned that, Sheikh Yusuf Esses. A lot of people don't know that. And what else can we say about that? I is it true that American Muslims also enjoy a higher uh, economic class as well? There are those Muslims throughout the world okay. who are the most wealthy, materialistically speaking, okay. in the world. In Saudi Arabia, okay. in Kuwait, right. in Qatar, right. and in UAE, and right. these, the Gulf countries, but not only there. You'll find, and you might be surprised to know, in Turkey, some very rich Muslims. Mashallah. And in Egypt, some very, very wealthy. Rich. And in India, Very and in Pakistan, people of immense wealth, in Afghanistan, and you're saying these are very poor countries. Right. Yes, the bulk of them are poor, right. but the responsibility on the Muslims who have is not being met, right. because they're supposed to give to the have-nots, to their zakat or purification of wealth. And when we don't see that, then we see Muslims everywhere suffering. And also, you might not know this, maybe you do, that whenever we withhold the zakat, Allah withholds the rain. And you'll find in Muslim countries, many places, no rain. Why? Why are we seeing rain so much in countries like America, for instance, and for Europe, and in UK? Why are they getting all the rain? Right. It is yeah. related because they do have, even though we say, well, they don't have the right belief. That isn't the issue. The issue is, with what they do have, do they give in this world? Because if they give charity in this world, Allah gives back to them, even if they don't have the right belief. Their rewards are in this world. Maybe they won't get anything on a day of judgment. That's another story. 
But in this world, if they follow the rule, give charity, give charity, give charity, give of your wealth, give, 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 right, and right. Allah will give you more, give you more. But when you withhold, then Allah will withhold, and you will suffer, and so will the people living there. SubhanAllah, that's another good answer, Sheikh Yusuf. Is it safe to say that if Muslims themselves follow Islam correctly, then nobody could undermine Islam and say that Muslim countries are backward? We don't have to say it. We have the proof for it. The very clear proof that at the time of Muhammad, peace be upon him, those righteous Muslims who did follow Islam suffered not from what we suffer from, but something else. Whereas they ran away from the material world, the dunya, chasing right, them. Right. Huh? They want to get away from me, get away yeah. from me. Yeah. And it was chasing them. They were having wealth thrown at them. Right. Yes. Excellent point. For us, we're running after it, and it runs away from us. So that, that's an excellent <laughs> point, Sheikh Yusuf. <laughs> that's an excellent point. The early Muslims ran away from wealth. They immigrated away from wealth to find a peaceful place to practice Islam. Where today, we see the They gave up wealth, my God, man. Yeah. Some of the richest people in Mecca joined Islam and lost everything. Abu Bakr, Abdurrahman bin Awf, uh, um, Uthman bin Affan. So many. These are some of these richest people. Right. And look what they gave up. They left their wealth to enter Islam. Mm -hmm. Where today we see a reverse migration where people are... And then the wealth still chased them. Right. I remember the story of Abdurrahman uh, bin Auf that one morning uh, around Fajr time something, he went out of the masjid and on the way he came to know that there was a caravan coming. Okay. And he offered to buy it and he gave so much for it. And as he was coming back in, I don't know if he went to the toilet or what he went, but when he was coming back in, somebody else came to him to buy it from him, and he hadn't even seen it yet. And he had it okay, even. so he accepted this profit. Right. He, got, he had already paid for it. Now he accepted a profit for it, and he gave it all to Islam when he got back in the mosque. He just gave it to the Prophet. So he said, here, take all of it. MashaAllah, another good answer. Sheikh Yusuf, what about our student audience? Do you think they have another good question? Let's find out. Yes. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is Ahmed and uh, my question is uh, how can I or any other Muslim be a good model for Islam? Excellent question because people are perhaps saying uh, maybe as Muslims if we're not practicing our deen we are ourselves undermining Islam. So how can we work to not undermine Islam and to be a good example? I think you've hit maybe on one of the most important points. I think you did. Because when we talk about Islam, people are looking around to get an example of it. I mean, you can have a book, you've got a philosophy, you've got an ideology, you're presenting something to me, you're saying, oh, this should be like that, this should be like so-and-so, people should do this, people should do that. Right, okay, right, let's right. look at the Muslims and see what we got. Right. Whoa, whoa, the opposite here. I go into Pakistan, I go, oh my God. I go to Egypt, oh no, right. Saudi Arabia, oh wow, wow. Right. I'm not seeing what I'm hearing. Right, I agree, Sheikh. But one of the things I will caution anybody, don't judge the religion by the people that claim they're following it. Any religion, not just Islam, any religion. This whole truth. Actually, any ideology. Any ideology. For instance, I'll give you the one that's not related to religion. It's opposite. It's communism. Okay. Communism very clearly calls for something beautiful, actually. And that's a sharing of communal wealth, right. communal knowledge, and to on all levels, right. really share with people, right? Right. Of course. But that's ideology. In practice, it sucks. Look it's at, horrible. Look at the Soviets. Nobody likes it. Right. Of course. Right. Look at the Soviets. We can't say that they're actually practicing communism. Not true communism. Right. Of course. What we what we know as communism from them is something horrible, and I attribute that to the fact there's no belief beyond their own society itself. Right. Believe in your society as what? It becomes the God. Right, right. Whereas in Islam, we know Allah has set these priorities. He set this pecking order in place for us. He's given us commandments. He's shown us how to live our lives. And then he's let us free to, do, to choose. But if you'll choose what he said, you'll find that all this society will come together in a very nice way. Another good answer, Sheikh Yusuf Estes. What about the next episode? Do you think you have some more good answers? Because I have some more Good questions for you. Well, we'll find out soon enough. Okay, you guys stay tuned <laughs> next time for more, inshallah, for more good answer with Sheikh Yusuf Estes. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I am a Muslim. I am a Muslim. Islam my deen. Islam my deen. Allah my Lord. Allah my Lord. His word Quran. His word Quran. Muhammad Prophet. Muhammad Prophet. Praise be upon him. Praise be upon him. I am a Muslim.
whistling for all of time Look at me now Family around my deathbed I know not when Allah will call me home The life I led Oh what a blessed thing As death comes to me These words I will sing I am a Muslim Islam my deen Allah my Lord His word Quran His word Quran Muhammad Praise be upon I'm a Muslim for